Ooh, this one will be fun. Let's copy this table and write some parses. Welcome Haskellings to day 16. We can paste in the hex to binary table and use the power of vim to make that into a pattern matching function that directly gives us a list of ones and zeros. Because our input is one line, we use interact prime. And then we're going to write parsec parses for binary streams. So far, we've only been parsing strings. But if we write our own token prim function, we can parse other types of streams as well. We can use a standard show for show talk, ignore updating source position with a const dot const, and test talk can simply return a just value when it's found a match. And that's really all we need to do to be able to parse custom streams. Next, we need a data type to parse into, so we can call this i for instruction, and it'll be either a literal with a version and value, or an operation with a version, opcode, and sub-instructions. So the instruction parser will have the following type, which is like the parser type we've used before, but parsing a stream of ints instead of chars. The first thing we do is to read in the 3-bit version number. Let's write a separate parser to read in n-bit numbers. We can first use parsex count function to read in the specified number of tokens, then our AOC read bin function can be extended to be able to read in lists of ints. For that to work, we just need to make a read bin instance for int, and it's as easy as that. And because read bin returns a maybe int, we use from maybe in int n as well. And that should be i in the type there. So we can now keep going with instra. And next up is the 3-bit t value. When t is 4, we have a literal value, so let's make another parser for that. We can use recursion to keep reading in the indicator bit and the value. If the indicator is 1, then do the recursion, else return, on the value of the previous results times 16, plus the value we just read. Back to instra, and for any other t-value, we need to parse the sub-instructions. We read in the length type id i, then when that's 0, we read in the length as a 15-bit value. But let's start with the easier case, where we read in the 11-bit instruction count, then again use the count function to parse l sub-instructions. The other case requires us to read in l bits. Then we can explicitly call parse on that new substream. We ignore errors on the either type we get back. Now we're ready to actually parse our binary stream. Again, we ignore errors, then we calculate the version sum with a separate function. It'll simply use pattern matching to add up all the version numbers recursively, and then we're done. Part 2 requires us to assign a meaning to all of the opcodes, and then evaluate the value of the whole transmission. Fortunately, this is quite easy to do, and we can evaluate recursively using a function to translate from opcode to operation. 0 means sum, 1 is product, and so on. The binary operations take in exactly two arguments, but Haskell won't let us specify a function with different numbers of arguments, so we have to do it like this. Lastly, there's an equality operation, and then that should be it. So, as always, happy Haskelling!